end of another school year is upon us, so it's time for me to give you another update on how all of our curriculum picks went. Hi, I'm Stacy with Kids Learning for Life, and for reference, I just want to remind you, I currently, this year, have a third grader, a second grader, and a kindergartner. So as we go through all these curriculum choices, I'll kind of point out um, who, which curriculum is for, but mostly I'm going to go in the order of just doing each subject and then kind of break apart each grade level. So we're just going to go through it by subject, so let's get started. First up is all about reading. Now, I am currently using level one and three. One is with my kindergartner. We're super close to finishing this one. And same with level three. We're really close to finishing this one for my second grader. So <laughs> we have been working on this. Absolutely love all about reading. Going to continue using it with my kindergartner for sure. He'll be moving into level two next year. And for my second grader, I'm going to have to look at the placement charts and see if he... I feel like he's going through this, we're going through it a little bit slower than I would have anticipated, but he's still getting reading in other places that I think he might test out of level four, but I'll have to see. So we'll see if I need to continue on with level four next year. For my third grader, we started out the year by just doing literature studies where I would pick a book and that would be the book that he would read aloud to me and then we would either do like comprehension questions, I'd come up with random little activities and that worked really, really well. So currently we're reading Hank the Cowdog, um, the first book, and he's reading that aloud to me. This is actually really funny for adults too um, because the dog thinks he's in charge, but he's not really. So I don't know, I found this book really entertaining. So it's fun to have him read it to me and we are probably gonna continue with that next year as well. A few other things that we incorporate into reading is I do have my kiddos do 15 minutes of silent reading or independent reading on their own, and that's just to, they can go to the bookshelf and get whatever book they want and just kind of read that way. And with that reading, there's two things that I kind of started incorporating this year were uh, book adventure and narration. So Jenny loves the Charlotte Mason method and has really been talking a lot about narration um, with me. And so I decided to give it a try and it's been very interesting. So um, we can use narration in our kind of read alouds as a family, but I really liked using the narration in this setting right after they read something for their silent reading, then they'll come to me and they narrate what they read. So that way I can kind of know, oh, what were you reading? Um, and it's giving them practice, you know, they're having to practice realizing that I am not reading the story. They'll read a bunch of chapter books and things that I'm not super familiar with the characters. So they have to be able to start figuring out like, oh, you know, I have to say the character's name or I have to say they started here and ended here. So all of these kind of um, summary skills that they would learn in writing, that they're learning how to do it first through narration. So that's been the most interesting part to me by using narration is just that they are learning how to better articulate themselves. And that's been really, really fun to see them start developing those skills just by talking. The other thing I sort of implemented this year was using Book Adventure. Now this is an online program and I only ever let them use it if it's like free computer time, but you could use it more often if you wanted to. Again, since I have the narration, I'm kind of checking in to see if they're comprehending what they're reading. But Book Adventure incorporates quizzes and uh, vocabulary and all sorts of things based on the book they're reading. So you can go in and search for the book you're looking at. It'll say, oh, is this the book you want? They click it and then they can do a bunch of quizzes, some writing assignments. And as they complete those activities for that book, they then get points and coins that they could go in and play games. So again, like I said, that's what I use for free time. They're, you know, reading random things throughout all of their independent reading and then just outside of, you know, school time. And so they can use any of those books and do the quizzes and whatnot, earn coins and then play the game. So it's kind of like free computer time and they get to show that they're reading and also play the game. So it's fun for them and makes me happy because I'm knowing that they are understanding what they are reading. A few other ways that I'm introducing my kiddos to books are with family read aloud. So this is at night before bed. We pick a novel. We got into Harry Potter this year and now we've actually gotten into uh, Benjamin Pratt and the Keeper of the School. So that's about five or six books and we're about three or four books in. I can't remember, but I know we've got them all so that we can finish up. Um, and that has been really fun just for us to go on an adventure together. And that's my favorite part about the nightly read alouds is it's something that all three of us are doing together at one time. And it's just a really special time in the evening for us. 
Lastly, we also use audiobooks. Uh, we use the app Tales to Go, but there are lots of other apps you can use that are free or paid, and just getting to do audiobooks in the car. I love audiobooks in the car because it just gives us all something to, again, going on that adventure. Really, right now, the only thing we listen to is Boxcar Children. We're probably on like 50 or 60 um, number-wise, and they have, I think, over 100. So we're still making our way through all of those, and they're really fun because they go somewhere different kind of each time, or they're experiencing some new um, place or some sort of topic. So it gives us something to kind of chat about, and like one time they went to the desert, or one time they went to the caves, or one time they went to San Francisco. So we get to talk about all these different places kind of in a history sense as well. So that's a lot of fun as well. Next up for ELA is writing. Now I know I said that writing was a big push for us this year, especially for my third grader because of state testing. Good news, he actually enjoyed the state testing and was so excited to come out and tell me, oh, I was writing this story and it was so cool and he told me all about the story he wrote. Um, I hope he was supposed to write a story, we will see. But he was loving it and had a lot of fun um, getting to type his story into the state testing. So all we did this past year was really just kind of focused on journaling. We did some topic sentence work, lots of things just kind of thrown together. And so I'm thinking of trying to use something a little more structured that's a little easier to follow, but it seemed to work okay for us this year. For my kindergartner and second grader, we did just, I grabbed some handwriting without tears. Um, I used printing power. I don't think they have levels on here, um, but it was just like the kindergarten and I think second grade level for each of them, just their corresponding grade levels, and just had them do that to do some extra practice with handwriting. Um, I found that my second grader would start to get a little grumpy when it was time to write anything very long, and I think it was just because he was taking, it was taking too much brain power to just write the letters, so I wanted him to get even more practice with that, and just being able to write for longer periods of time. And then the kindergartner was just learning letters anyway, so they were just you know, practicing their letter formations with the Handwriting Without Tears book. For spelling and vocabulary, I really find that they get this with reading books, but I do like that Typing Club did have a third grade spelling and vocabulary kind of lesson area. So I had my third grader do that just kind of periodically. I, we, we did it daily, but it was probably three times a week that he would go on there. Um, and so he would do his Typing Club lesson, and then he would go in and do a spelling and vocab lesson. And that was kind of all that I did for spelling and vocab. Um, next year, when my second grader is a third grader, I'll have him start doing that level as well. And just, it, it's something that's just fun, and that way I know they're, they're getting something, um, but I know they're being exposed to so much vocabulary and spelling and being able to read that in all the books they read, so I'm not super focused on that. Jumping on over to math, again, a longtime favorite is primary mathematics. We've been using it. Um, they're all going to finish their prospective grade levels. Um, well, my kindergartner is working through 1B and almost done with that. And then my second grader is doing 2B and third grader is doing 3B. Uh, we did spend a lot more time really trying to um, pin down some of the, for my third grader multiplication facts, because that was brought up. And really for my second grader working on word problems. So I did find that we were able to slow down a little bit with the curriculum and kind of um, fine tune some of the learning that was going on and then we were able to move forward. So we should be finishing up all of these um, level B books for each of my kiddos by the end of the school year. Jumping on over to history, we used a new curriculum this year by Pandia Press called History Quest and um, that came with a study guide, but it's kind of similar if you're familiar with Story of the World where there's like a novel that you're reading from um, and it just goes over different, um, different time periods and different places. So for here, it started out in Paleolithic times, went through Sumer, Egypt, Babylonian, Assyria, Persia, um, and then goes all the way in through Arabia. So you're definitely in the ancient times here, and that's what we're working on. I did like this. Um, it was fun. My kiddos, they really liked the read aloud portion. Um, just sometimes it was hard for me to incorporate the read alouds um, this year. I just had an extra busy work schedule. And um, like you can see, we didn't quite get through all of this, but it has, they, they were enjoying it when we did it. So that was something that um, I, I need to keep in mind for next year. I think we will just kind of continue on with the ancient history um, and then, or sorry, the early times, and then it moves on to middle ages. So maybe next year 
We'll keep using this and then move on to Middle Ages. Another thing I have considered is they do have a audiobook version. So we love audiobooks and maybe I can start incorporating the audiobooks to have them read aloud um, instead of me having to find the extra time to sit down and do it. So I don't know, but I really have been enjoying doing the read alouds and like I said, they do enjoy it. So um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how, how I want to keep going forward with this, but I definitely want to keep this around. Next up for history, economics, and government, at the beginning of the year I said I was going to be working through the Tuttle Twins book. My goal was to do read-alouds, but we already know how this was going. <laughs> it was hard to get all the read-alouds in, so we did not do these read-aloud wise. But what I did find was they were sitting on our shelf, and my kiddos started picking them up and reading through them on their own. It's very like high picture um, to word ratio, so that's really nice. Um, so they actually sort, I think my third grader ended up reading all of these um, and we hadn't quite done narration at the time when he was reading through these. So I don't know exactly how much he got out of it, but definitely something that I still want to kind of read aloud. So maybe I'll have to come up with a plan. I think there's 12 of these, so I could do like one per month next year and kind of schedule it out a little bit and see how that works. I don't know. Sometimes the schedules work, sometimes they don't. I really have to mull that over. Next up is science. And this year we use the Pandia Press Astronomy and hmm, I think astronomy is not my favorite. Um, <laughs> I found it to just be a little bit boring. My kids enjoyed it. Whenever we did lessons, it's similar to History Crest. Whenever we got it out, they liked it and enjoyed it. But I had a hard time getting myself to do the activities because I didn't think, I don't know, the activities, they were great, but they weren't like super exciting to me. Uh, my kids found it fun. But if it doesn't get me excited, it's very hard to want to teach it and get it into the curriculum. Science is one of those topics that I think kids are naturally exposed to because it's all about kind of that scientific thinking and that process. So we got our science in through lots of YouTube videos. We got our science in through books. Uh, we got our science in through experiments that we did. And um, like we just recently got the life cycles for butterflies and caterpillars and we watched those. We got some owl pellets this year to dissect. So lots of science happens naturally. And then again, we're living on um, some property. So we do, we had uh, pigs earlier this year, we have chickens and now we just got some goats. So they're getting a lot of science throughout the day. So I will definitely leave a link to Jenny's video talking about how she ditched her science curriculum and what she's doing instead. And I may be leaning towards that path as well. So we'll see. I'm not quite, I haven't fully decided yet, but I am finding that I want my science to be more student led rather than just doing astronomy for eight weeks or 16 weeks or whatever the case may be. Another part of the sciency era is technology. And so this year, like I said, my kids will have free computer time. Um, and that's mostly when they get any technology learning in. I have, we have access to CodeMonkey. They use Scratch, they even use Scratch Junior on the iPad. They do Typing Club and we even got a 3D printer. We're still kind of working our way through the 3D printer curriculum. So I don't have a ton to talk about that yet, but I do find technology kind of in the science topic as well. And they really enjoy all of the um, games and apps. So we are gonna continue to move forward with all of that. The last thing that I did say that we were using at the beginning of the school year was iReady. And I did use that kind of as like my backup plan for if they weren't doing a reading lesson with me or if we had a sick day, I would just say, hey, go on, get re I ready reading and math done. And that kind of covered my bases. Well, I was finding that we were using I ready quite, quite a lot at the beginning and kind of tapered off because I wasn't seeing the same results I was expecting um, from a curriculum. So it's definitely okay supplemental and on those like backup days if I need it, but I was not finding that it was great to use like all the time. So that is what worked for us this school year and how everything went. There are some new additions and some changes that I wanna make for next school year. So my very next video will be all about that. So be sure to look out for that. But if you wanna see some big changes that Jenny is making, be sure to check out her video over here. And until then, happy homeschooling and see you next time.